Over the next few videos, we're going to discuss acid-base titrations, which involve the controlled addition of a strong acid or base of known concentration and amount to a solution of a weak base or acid. And often, the goal is to determine the concentration of the weak acid or base in that unknown solution by applying stoichiometry. But now that we've seen acid-base equilibrium and discussed it in detail, we'll also come to see in this section how we can use titration to measure the equilibrium properties of a weak acid or base, specifically the acidity and basicity constants, pKa and pKb. We'll also see how buffers are involved when we titrate a weak acid or base solution and how we generate a buffer in the midst of a titration. So this will be a great context to apply our prior understanding of acid-base equilibrium and really think deeply about the equilibrium properties of analyte titrant mixtures in the midst of a titration. All right, let's start by rolling the clock back to chapter four and defining what we mean by an acid-base titration. In any titration, a precisely measured amount of a solution called a titrant is added using a piece of glassware called a burette to an unknown solution called the analyte. So we have the analyte typically in an Erlenmeyer flask. In this little drawing, it's blue. And the titrant here is red, and it's added via a burette to the analyte in a controlled manner. So we add dropwise using very precisely known volumes the red solution to the blue solution until a well-defined endpoint is reached. And this is often indicated by a color change. Close to the endpoint, ideally right at the endpoint, we have a situation where just enough titrant has been added to fully consume the analyte. And because we know the concentration of the titrant solution and we know precisely the volume added, we can go from the number of moles of titrant to the number of moles of analyte, that's going to require a balanced equation, which we'll touch on again here in a second, to the concentration of the analyte in that original blue solution before any titrant was added. And in an acid-base titration, the reaction is between an acid and hydroxide, or a base and hydronium. So the titrant in red is a strong base or acid, a source of hydroxide or hydronium in known amount. The analyte may be a strong or weak acid or base. It is key here, though, that the titration reactions are irreversible. They must be irreversible and complete. These reactions can't have any equilibrium back and forth. We want every molecule of hydroxide to react with HA, for example, to produce A- and H2O. Now, HA and A- may have a separate equilibrium of their own, but the reaction between the titrant and the analyte must be complete. On a basic level, what we often want to do with titration is go from, for example, a known number of moles of hydroxide to an unknown number of moles of HA and infer the concentration of HA in the original uh, analyte solution from the known number of moles of hydroxide. We can also play the same game with titration of a base. If we don't know the number of moles of base, we can use the known number of moles of hydronium added to infer the moles of base that were in the original solution and use the original solution volume to calculate the concentration of B in the original solution. So this is the basic kind of stoichiometric idea behind a titration. In this practice problem, we're essentially asked to apply the stoichiometric approach to determine the concentration of HCl in an analyte solution where the HCl analyte is titrated with a solution of sodium hydroxide. So we've got a 50 ml sample of aqueous HCl, that's a strong acid, and we've got a volume, 35.23 milliliters, of NaOH titrant of known concentration, 0.250 moles per liter. And we're given the titration reaction. It's the reaction between HCl and NaOH to produce sodium chloride, NaCl, and water, H2O. And we're asked, what is the molarity of the HCl? Well, let's start by determining the known number of moles of hydroxide that were added in the course of this titration. We've got a volume of 35.23 milliliters, that's 0 0.03523 liters, and by multiplying by the given concentration, we can find the number of moles of hydroxide that were added in, 8.83 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of hydroxide in this case. 
Now, using the titration chemical equation, there's a one-to-one -one mole ratio between HCl and NaOH. And at the equivalence point, which occurs after this addition of 35.23 milliliters, the end point and equivalence point here we're assuming are the same point, this is numerically equal to the moles of HCl, thanks to the one-to-one -one mole ratio of HCl to NaOH. So you can imagine this as we're taking the 8.83 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of NaOH and multiplying by the molar ratio one mole of HCl for every mole of NaOH involved in the reaction. And this is, of course, numerically equal to the moles of NaOH. So this is our number of moles of HCl that were in the original analyte solution. If you think back here to this picture of titration, we had 8.83 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of hydrochloric acid, or HCl, in the original blue solution before any of the hydroxide titrant was added. We're interested in the concentration of HCl in that original solution. So we're going to take that number of moles and divide by the original analyte solution volume of 50 milliliters or 0 0.05000 liters. And this comes out to 0.176 milliliters. And this is an important conceptual point. You may be tempted to add the 35.23 milliliters to the 50 milliliters of aqueous HCl that we started with, but this isn't really conceptually correct. What we're interested in is the concentration of HCl in that original solution. The amount of sodium hydroxide we added in is sort of incidental. It depends on the 0.250 molar concentration of the titrant and would change if we changed that concentration of the titrant. What really matters here is the concentration in that original blue solution, if you like, it's not really blue, but color-coded blue, solution of hydrochloric acid and water.